Hey there, Sharon Horn Elsmere. Welcome to day 1,660 of What She Up To Now. Documenting the business journey primarily as I've transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and back and forth again. I've uh, been involved in businesses for almost five decades, uh, which kind of tells you how old I am. I did start my first business when I was very young, 13. It was my first own business. I did other things before with my family because I come from a very entrepreneurial family. Uh, while simultaneously spending over a quarter century in corporate America as well. Kind of followed in my dad's footsteps. He worked in corporate America, but he always had entrepreneurial projects and businesses on the side. And I, I liked that lifestyle and I liked what it afforded our family. And so I wanted to create that in my own family and in my own life as well. And that's what I've done for uh, my whole career, actually. My whole corporate career, I always had businesses on the side and my, uh, once I left corporate America, 2004, I believe, 2003, 2004, I left corporate America finally and said, okay, I got my side things going on. Why am I still in corporate America? I, I wanted to go to corporate America because I wanted to learn how big, big corporations and businesses do different things and interact all the different functions of the business, etc. And so I, I learned, I guess I figured I learned as much as I was going to learn in that structure and then struck out on my own. So since 26, 2017, actually, following my divorce and all the uh, division of assets in uh, 2017, I wanted to explore the online world and find out what it was all about. I'd, I'd been curious and, and, you know, dabbled, but I didn't even really dabble. I just did a couple of different things while I was uh, running my businesses, but I never really jumped in and knew much about the internet or the online world. And so in 2017, I decided I was going to do the ClickFunnels certification program. They had a certification program for funnels and I joined that program so I could get an overall understanding of how to do things online. And I think that was a great foundational way to start. But like so many others, I got dragged, not dragged, I got enticed down many different alleys in many different, and they call it shiny object syndrome online. I've never heard that term before, but it's when you are attracted to a whole lot of different techniques and strategies and tips and tricks and hacks. I hate the word hack, but okay. You hack ice, right? You don't hack business. Uh, you find ways to be more efficient and more effective, but that's not a hack. That's smart and good business. That's, we do the same things in our life, right? We find ways to make our life work for us via habits and rituals and routines and tools that make our life easier. So. Uh, today I produced two pieces of content, three including this video of documenting my journey. Uh, the first one is for my Super Size Your Business group and our idiom today, I, this year I decided I was going to pick an idiom that went along with the topic of the annual challenge and our annual challenge this year is the BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us. And this month we're focusing on the area of confidence. I use a nine area life framework, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, contribution. I learned from, I think, Tony Robbins in like the 80s. And then I added last year because I was getting some coaching in the area of confidence and communication. Those two areas to my life framework and my structure that I use to set my goals, set my objectives, uh, and to break them down into bite-sized pieces and things I can do every single day to guarantee I'm going to get my goals and objectives for the year which feed into my longer term objectives, my five year, 10 year, 20 year legacy goals and objectives. So confidence is our topic this month and our idiom today was stiff upper lip. Now I've got a lot of experience with stiff upper lips. From the time I was little on, I've been okay, accident prone and klutzy, which meant as a two year old, I fell over a tricycle and ripped open my face and my lip, literally stiff upper lip. And uh, then the next year I, was President Kennedy's funeral and I was rocking in a chair even though my mom told me not to and I fell backwards and cracked my head open on a coffee table and and had to get stitches in my head I remember being more mad about my hair because I had grown long hair having to be cut and shaved than anything else just in a spot so I, that's when I started wearing Gibson girls when I was a little girl for the longest time so I physically had challenges that made it necessary for me to be a little stronger than a lot of little kids my age because I actually had physical challenges that I needed to have a stiff upper lip for. And I probably didn't. I could have cried and been a big baby, but early on it was like, well, 
it's going to happen. I'm going to get the stitches. I'm going to get my face fixed. I'm going to get the nail removed and out of my foot when I stepped on the car. <laughs> and then all kinds of other things, too. I had tonsillitis and laryngitis and lots of uh, infections and things when I was a little kid. I don't know why. It was just infection prone. And so I... I still wanted to have fun. I was a kid and I wanted to have a fun kid experience with my sisters. So I worked my way through a lot of, of things that most people would be laying in bed for. And, and that has served me really well as I've had other health challenges and other things as I've been an adult, as well as business challenges and job challenges and educational challenges, because our life is filled with things we need to deal with all the time. And how we handle them is usually the most important thing right stuff is going to happen to all of us and it's up to us to decide whether it's good bad ugly if it's something we need to react to and how we're going to react and respond to those things so uh, stiff upper lip was our idiom today and I tied that into how do you use your experiences to grow and build and supersize your business and how do you have resolve and commitment and resiliency and determination and how do you have your end in mind of what it is that you're creating in the world and then use your core values and guiding principles and, and in, introduce those to the culture of your business so that you do create the end result, the business that you want to see in the world. Our topic for today, we're running through the SOAP framework with the area of confidence. And so we're on the O of the SOAP framework, which stands for options. And we talked about having at least 10 options to choose from for any problem that, that comes our way. And sometimes you can do those really quickly in your head and you know exactly what you're gonna do and it, it happens almost on a subconscious level. That's what we're trying to get to by installing the SOAP framework into our subconscious. But there's other situations, other problems that are bigger that we have to, that we want to actually consciously look at. So we've picked an area of confidence that we're working on. I'm working on one with my family and my sisters and a move that we're making with my mom and how to make that a great positive experience. And so talked about the story and the situation yesterday, where we are now, what the current situation is, what I want it to be. So that is our current to desired situation. And how we get there is through different options that we brainstorm and come up with. But we want to come up with at least 10 so we don't lock ourselves into that either or thinking. I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to do, I can do this or that. And that's, that's number one, not true. There's always more than two options to any problem or, or situation. Um, I do this or I'm going to die. I, come on, really? No. You can do this or not do this. and You're probably not going to die. There's probably all kinds of things in between. So we want to make sure we're letting ourselves see and feel and experience all the different possibilities. Not all, but a lot of different possibilities so we don't lock ourselves into that. And then we're going to pick three of those. And we're going to analyze and choose to take action on one of those tomorrow through the A in the SOAP framework. So that was our... Uh, talking, I talked about some of the tools we've used in the past to do that power vision, movie visualization, meditation, uh, imaginary friend discussion, uh, or actually discussing with a friend, brainstorming with a friend. Uh, what else did we do? We've done a bunch of different things. So different brainstorming techniques and things. That's it. I am helping my mom move. That's, that's a big project. And uh, when things come up with my family, my schedule gets cleared out. And that becomes my priority. So that's my priority until we get her packed up and ready to go. Um, and again, it's she's moving out of my, my home state. She usually comes up for the summer, but she's selling her home. So it's, you know, a sad kind of bittersweet time, but I want to enjoy as much time with her as I possibly can because I don't get down to Texas as much as I wish or would like to uh, for a lot of reasons. But uh, I guess I'm making excuses. I could go more often. So I will make sure that I do go more often. Uh, moving forward, I mean, if she's only going to be there, and I think she'll still come up in the summer and stay with my other sister, so um, it's not like she's not going to come up at all. She just doesn't have her, her central location and her own space here, which she hasn't for a while, and that's another story. So, if I can help you in any way, I, I will always be available if you ask. Uh, it's really interesting. I make this offer, and I say, hey, I guarantee that in five minutes or less, we can get you moving in the direction you want to go, it, and usually people work with me on business things but with, with respect to other areas and aspects of our lives as well uh, in five minutes or less I guarantee it you can box for me on at pajamagramma at gmail.com or you can direct message me and we'll find five minutes as busy as I am if people are willing to ask and why do I offer this because one of my biggest challenges in my life has been to 
ask advice or ask for help in certain areas or aspects of my life. Uh, if I had asked for advice or asked for help or done things differently when I was younger, I'm sure my life would have taken a very different turn, very different tack. All of our lives would, right? But it's one area that I need to, like listening, I need to continually work on improving my communication and listening skills. We're going to talk about that next month as part of the annual challenge. Uh, that's our focus. <laughs> but asking for help is another one, and that's why I make this offer, and I will find five minutes. Again, no matter how busy you are, all of us can find five minutes in a day to make something we want to have happen, happen. And if you're stuck in any way, asking is the fastest way to get unstuck. Because here's a secret. I used to never ask for help. Remember when I first came online, was doing the ClickFunnels certification program, you could only get a, a, two, a lesson a week. And then you do the lesson, you'd implement, you'd, you'd uh, practice, and you'd create something, and then you'd turn in your homework, and you had to wait for it to be graded. And if there was something wrong on it, or if they wanted you to do something different, you'd do it, and then you'd resubmit it. Well, there were a couple sections and a couple things in that course that I got stuck on. And we had a whole group of like a couple hundred people that we could have just gone into the group and asked. But I always feel like I should be a sol solver. And if I can figure it out myself, I should figure it out myself because that teaches me to be a better problem solver. It teaches me to be responsible. It teaches me to be uh, creative and and figure stuff out, but sometimes it slows me down unnecessarily. And twice, I finally got up the gumption in that program to ask, you know, type in the question. And both times, as soon as I typed in the question, the exact solution popped into my head. For some reason, I was blocking it, but then it was like a light bulb going off. And I think that was an indicator to me that it's okay to ask. And sometimes just asking frees up the block that you have in your mind that allows you to see the answer that you knew all along, but you were some, for some reason blocking. I have no idea why I was blocking those those things. I can't even remember what the, they were right now. I think they were both weird little technical glitches. And one, it turned out that there was something in the software that needed to be repaired. So that was good. I, and had I asked sooner, it probably would have been fixed for other people sooner as well. So don't forget to ask have an awesome day. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow just to fill you in on what's going on with the challenge, what's going on in the Supersize Your Business group, and what I'm creating for content. Uh, I would imagine that through the rest of the year, that's the content I'll be creating. I have other business projects and things going on with, with different people, but most of them are, you know, they don't want me advertising who they are and who I'm working with. So, And I get that. I, I understand that. There's all this, uh, in both the online and offline world, there's this secretive move where we don't want other people to know what we're doing and that comes out of fear and lack and scarcity and worrying about competition but when you're being yourself and showing up and creating what you want to create in the world you really don't have any competition all right have an awesome day i'll be with you tomorrow